So today is called, there is a solution for everything. And I can imagine you're all intrigued as to how that is possible. Um, but hopefully we've got some wonderful testimonies that can actually um, vouch for that in terms of the logistics of their um, family dynamics. So welcome to Walk With Me UK. There is a solution for everything. So it's really about strengthening and rebuilding family relationships. And as you can see there, um, I have colourful scenes because I'm very much about colour. And I do believe that that is the essence of moving forward. You know, that doom and gloom, it really does make you feel good. So hopefully you'll enjoy that too. So about me, I'm the founder of Walk With Me UK. Um, it's a community interest company. And since 2015, I've worked with many parents that have had children with challenging behaviours using a non-violent, resistant NVR approach, offering a range of services for a domestic violence organisation and schools, just to name a few. My passion to support parents derived from my personal experience of knowing how effective these tools can be and the importance of supporting the wider family in need. So NVR was cleverly transformed from a political stand that Martin Luther King, Mahatma Gandhi and Rosa Parks demonstrated using a non-violent direct action and resistant approach to create peace, essentially about equality and rights. And this clever man, a professor from Israel had introduced this approach in schools, families and communities. Today, the topic will be about escalation and de-escalation. So essentially, it's about reducing conflict. And as you can see here, you know, there is like a lot going on here. We've got a war zone, chaos, toxic, destructive household. And essentially, we just need to regain love, regain empathy and regain respect. And more importantly, to stay connected. So that is the essence of escalation and de-escalation. We want to get to that point where we reduce conflict and all of the rest of what I've mentioned. So examples of the presented challenges and behaviours, inclusive or special neurological additional needs, which is um, the likes of ADHD and autism, the neurological development disorder, that can bring a lot of chaos, it can bring a lot of destruction, and essentially families don't know what to do, where to go and who to call. And these are some of the examples of the behaviours that people would experience. And unfortunately, it is really in serious terms in terms of some people they want to call the police you know they don't know what to do they want help from other services so aggression verbal abuse threatening bullying disrespectful manipulative controlling intimidating i mean the list goes on and one that is really really scary for a lot of parents is risk-taking behaviors running in the road jumping out of windows suicide effects, threats, child on parent physical and emotional and mental abuse, self-harm, the list goes on. So these are often due or linked to school exclusions, child grooming, child criminal exploitation linked to missing, and child sexual exploitation linked to missing. So in this respect, people really do not know what to do. So de-escalation is a tool that really does support parents. We give this visual because from being really burnt out on my right, we want to see that we get, get them closer to the, the stick that's upright and looking bright. So with that, we would need to use the NVR tools and the tools are mixed with different approaches. And essentially what is really uh, what it's really about sorry is about all of these tools to support the de-escalation process so it's not an overnight process it definitely does take work but i think persistence is key and the calmer that you can have your home is the better 
and some people they call it harmonious compared to when it was chaos and like a war zone. So in order for some parents to understand really what they're going through, because it's such a traumatic time, we do go for a questionnaire and it looks like this. And some of the, the questions really does open the parents' eyes. You know, they're in a whirlwind of trauma. They don't know what to do. You know, they, they, they feel judged. They feel like they're to the blame. They feel guilty. So we just go through these questions and, you know, it really does sort of promote that fact that they're not alone because they find that other parents are genuinely answering the questions the same. So sometimes I no longer recognize myself when I get into a difficult argument with my child. A lot of them would say, yes, I feel like my child's servant. My child can kick off without any obvious reason or triggers. I can tell what sort of mood my child is in. My parenting efforts are often undermined by my partner. I'm afraid of my child. I discuss my parenting with others, but feel I'm not supported. I feel the way I act or react comes from my own feelings and values. So all of those, at least each parent would resonate with at least one of those questions. And we do it at the beginning and then we do it at the end to see where they're at. And more often than not, they do see a change, a positive change. So with that, we do need the NVR pillars of strength, which are de-escalation, baskets of prioritizing behaviors, supporters, which is looking at the support network, reconciliation gestures, which is acts of kindness and love, active resistance. So it's almost putting up a shield to protect themselves from abuse, whether it's physical or verbal, and self-care, because more importantly, it's about the parent looking after themselves. Because as we all know, if you don't look after yourself, you're no good for anybody else. So we look at the family values and more often than not, it's about the safety of the child and really the family. Respect, because I think you've heard about people saying, they must respect me, I'm the, el I'm the, the adult and they're the child independence but a healthy independence where you know that they're going out and they understand and they know that being safe and being connected is important and staying connected so connection before correction is key and why we say this is generally it's not really believe it or not be focusing on the behaviors it's about focusing on how you can reconnect or connect with your child to make change to break that cycle that's one of the key elements though is staying connected and ensuring that you build that connection because that more often than not if the child feels neglected then the pro chances are that they will act up they will play up in order to get that um attention and obviously when they when they're playing up is not normally a nice experience so that is a big factor. So we look at the parenting styles for that, actually. We look at, you know, are they giving in? Are the parents giving in when the child, you know, continues to badger them for things? And we look at whether the it's a joint escalation. So is, is the parent adding fuel to the fire? So we want to work towards getting and staying in the middle ground. So we, just, we look at being warm and friendly, but demanding and firm. So the ways we do that, joint escalation is, I'm assuming that a lot of people would resonate with this. Your child raises your voice, you raise your voice, your child shouts, you shout louder. And genuinely that is about who do you think you are? You're the child, I'm the parent. In my day, this didn't happen. You know, um, don't be disrespectful to me because I've given you everything that you need. You know, these are the conversations that most parents would say. But when there's things going on, the child isn't interested in any of that. And actually, more importantly, are they understanding what you're saying? Giving in escalation. 
is your child shouts and demands. After a while, you give in and let your child have their way, especially if you're exhausted. You've got lots of things to do. You haven't got time to so-called discipline. You know, so again, de-escalation is key. And with that in mind, it's basically saying what are the things that you should do in the point of heated moments. So staying calm, it's very difficult to do that. But once you get used to doing it, not only are you feeling better, but your child actually starts seeing the difference. Because unfortunately, it's always a cycle, repetitive thing that's happening. So when the child automatically sees the parent is all of a sudden calm, when they're expecting a reaction, that is a powerful thing to happen. And then from then, the parent feels a bit more confident, they can see change, and then things start to sort of mold itself. Stop and think, remain positive, give yourself time to plan your response, be non-judgmental, tell your child that you're doing this because you love them, you care for them, be gentle and firm, persist, resist violence, believe that things can get better. Remember, this isn't an overnight thing. People aren't just getting upset because one day their child is just getting up and not doing as they're told. It's an escalation of problems. Things have just got worse. So these are you know, important things to remember. What, should, what you should not do. So don't react, don't talk too much. Don't argue, don't lecture, don't threaten, don't raise your voice, don't use sarcasm, don't blame, don't say hurtful things, and don't use aggressive body language. Now, I can probably feel you all thinking, no, you should be telling a child not to do that, not an adult. <laughs> but believe it or not, when you are not doing some of those things, or maybe all of those things, the transition in how the child responds, that is what you call de-escalation because they're no longer now, can you imagine you're not arguing? So who are they gonna argue with if you're not arguing as a parent? If you're not threatening, they can't turn around and say, well, you threatened me, so I'm gonna do it back. If you're not blaming them, then you're not putting them in that guilty or embarrassed situation. You know, so if you think about it on that level, then you can, can understand why things will just get heated. Focus on building a connection and not the child's behavior. So what do we do? Because the usual thing is <laughs> strike when the iron is and what do we normally say? Does somebody want to raise their hands? <laughs> but in this situation it's striking when the iron is cold and it's a very powerful thing to do in all shapes and forms. It doesn't necessarily have to be when you're in the same household as your child. This can be when you're outside on the, you know, your, your child is out. Some people have said, we, we, I've done this through text messaging, you know, heated conversations on the text. But, you know, if you give them, if you rise to the bait, then, you know, you're, you're adding fuel to the fire. You're holding that conversation going. But, you know, if it was just about a case of, okay, I look forward to seeing you, something like that. Stay safe. What can they say? There's nothing to argue. And then you can check in again and say, I'm just checking to see if you're okay. And it would be nice if you're home by. Again, it's the way you would say it. That could change the term and the response of that child. So suggestions for de-escalation. And I think we've said a few, but these are actually from parents themselves. They've realized that what they used to do wasn't working. It caused a lot, a lot of trauma in the house um, for all different reasons. But, you know, generally a lot the verbal was really, really difficult. So it's a case of try not to raise your voice. Keep it calm and gentle. Don't use sarcasm, threats or say hurtful things. Try not to use aggressive body language which we said before so it's 
it's powerful once you start doing something and you see change, then you realize how powerful de escalation is. So, we're looking at the brain. Generally, it's not a science or, you know, biology or anything like that. It is genuinely to kind of um, give the parent food for thought when, you know, they're getting involved in a, an argument or something happens. And really, we, we look at the, the process of the child's brain, essentially. They say that the, the brain doesn't develop until the age of 25. So, therefore, we are looking at the process of, are they thinking rationally? What are their feelings? So the outer, the middle is the feeling. And we generally, it's nice just to know that we can be in the new brain. So the, the middle brain is genuinely the thinking. And as we can see, the feeling is kind of getting heated. Now, looking at that, that is where all of the the reptilian brain is exploding and that generally is saying this is what the child's brain is about and if you think about if your brain as a parent is the same then adding fuel to the fire or fire to fire nothing gets resolved so it's just about reminding the parent to stop think be calm walk away if you need to as so long as you're safe and striking when the iron's cold it makes a massive difference in how things turn out. So we always feel and remember that we need to be in the new brain. So as a case example, we have um, de-escalation and safety. Let's just bring that over a little bit. Um, and here it's saying you have an agreement with your teenage child um, that should be home by 10.30. And it's now gone midnight and you cannot contact them. You would usually call the police by this time to report him missing, but I've just been in an MVR class looking at de-escalation. Do you call the police or leave it, knowing that your child will go ballistic when they find out the next day? It's about the safety aspect and you know, safeguarding, making sure that people know that they're not where they're supposed to be so that they can be looked for. Because if anything happens, then unfortunately, you know, they, they kind of say, well, if you didn't, if you told us, then we would have been able to, to stop this from happening. So it is genuinely about safety. It's about your values. And that's when we go into the, the values of, you know, you wanting the child to be safe, you wanting them to have respect. And this is one of the key elements. We say about connection, a lot of it is building connections with services as well. You know, de-escalation is about you, you need the support. And as we've got in the tools of the NVR tools, it's about creating healthy support, effective support. So building in your community, building those networks where if you're feeling safe unsafe and you're not sure what to do then again once you've built those connections then there's people that you'll be able to speak to with those concerns if you really didn't want to call the police then at least a safer neighborhood team engagement officer you know so there's ways around it to ensure that your son's safe or your child's safe generally but the bigger picture is about their safety Timing, text and tone is very, very important. It's about when you say things, how you say things and generally the, the tone, um, you know, what, what is written as well. You know, it can make a big difference. So these are things to be mindful of. It can make, you know, something that would go up to 100 in, in, in decibels, just keeping it calm and relaxed. And really waiting, striking when the iron's cold, and then having conversations, which we've got a few examples here of conversations that people may find difficult, but in a way where you're you're kind of you're present as as a parent and you're making it clear that you understand what's happening, but at the same time it's not acceptable. And these are the things, you know, that you would do to ensure that you know everybody's safe everybody is happy and 
just looking at one of them, I don't think this will be easy for either of us because you're not putting the blame on them. But I'd like to talk to you briefly about something that has been worrying me. You know, that in itself can make such a difference um, through probably saying, look, I need to talk to you. You're getting on my nerves. You know, you're taking the mick. You know, you hear the difference of how that is said and how it will be received. Yeah. What I would say to everybody is that everything is baby steps. You cannot force the process, but what you can do is just be there, present, and really the less talking you do is the better. I think, you know, the brain, the child's brain just takes in more. Sometimes it's just that one word, I love you, you know, and, and that if they haven't heard that before because of all of the chaos and so forth, because you've said that, that sticks with them. Yeah. But, but you know, if, if you're going to say anything else, then they'll completely forget that you actually said you, that they loved you. And there are some more examples. You know, I'm concerned that you did not go to school in the morning today, but I've noticed that you've made a real effort. And again, you're concerned, you're telling them that you're concerned, but you're also almost saying, you know, but I appreciate you've made that effort. So again, they don't feel like they're, you know, they've been pounced upon and, oh, here we go again. You're moaning, you know, you always got something to talk about, you know, because that's all that is young people generally. And if obviously a child is younger, then you'll do it in, you know, a way they would understand. But it's letting them know that you've noticed a difference. Yeah. And that is all down to timing tone and text, the three T's. So the escalation, just to reiterate, it's not to retaliate in the heat of the moment. Notice when things start to escalate in and outside of the home. Taking a calm approach, not reacting in the heat of the moment. The escalation is not giving in. Remember the motto, it's strike when the iron is cold when everything is calm and everybody's got headspace to have that conversation about what wasn't right. So when it goes, it goes back to when we were, I was saying that there is a solution for everything because I do believe that. Just little tips, chart of recorded behavior. This is really, really useful, especially if you've got things ongoing where you know, you really are trying to put a stop to it. You need to look at your support network. Obviously, there's a lot more tools to, to learn, but just by being calm and just by choosing when to speak and choosing when to address something can make a big difference. But there may be other stuff um, that someone's asked about ADHD and so forth. You know, they present a lot of um, different, um, I guess, um, conditions so they may be hyperactive you know they may be very violent so it's good to record that just do it for one week and see if you notice a pattern and if you notice a pattern it might be actually they had fizzy drinks at, at eight o'clock in the evening and they wasn't supposed to you know because it's not good for their medication and so forth again that could be form of de-escalation so these are, this is a very good chart to have. So just to keep you on the straight and narrow um, for anybody that is dealing with any challenges, and even if you're not, because we're all human. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, um, I know that I'll be lying if I said I didn't argue with anybody in my household or didn't argue with a friend or so forth and or a neighbor or, you know, have a dispute about something. But Essentially, these tools are adaptable. So de-escalation, you can use that every which way possible. Um, so it is about keeping calm. Always remember what is good to do. And um, yeah, reflective listening is always very useful as well. I know if anybody is into psychology and so forth, um, I guess, you know, the whole thing about Acknowledging what someone's saying, do not ignore them because that is again a case of escalation. So it's just acknowledging by a nod or to say yes, you know, or you can repeat what they've said. Um, 
do not go into solution mode. So this isn't anything to do with what I'm saying about, you know, there is a solution for everything. It's just about, you know, when they try to sort of give you advice and the person's not having it. So, you know, just be there to listen more than anything else. Ask neutral questions or make such a comment as when someone does say, oh, a child says, oh, a teacher yelled at me, you know, today. Oh, that must have been upsetting. You know, generally, you're not sort of going on there both sides and so forth. You're just acknowledging that can make a massive difference as well. So sometimes you may refer to your own childhood experience by using I statements if you think that it could be helpful, just so that they don't feel that they're the only ones going through whatever it is that, you know, is upsetting them. And it goes back to the brain and I kind of take it that it looks a bit like a trifle. So sorry if it's put you off, but yeah, if it's going to make you remind you of not to add any fire to a fire, then so be it. And time in tone and talk or text. And there's the NVR toolkit. Parental presence is in the middle. Rebuilding a relationship and more so connection before correction. We do need to connect before we can correct, before we can even look at what it is that we need to deal with. And just to give you an example, through doing a group, you can see we've asked what tools was beneficial for a lot of parents. And you can see that yellow part, 23%, that was the escalation. That really did help most parents before they could do anything else. Once they got with the escalation, they were able to concentrate on the other tools. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming. I hope you found it useful. Definitely. Thank you, Angelique, for really sharing this wonderful learning. We've had lots of comments in the chat and you'll be able to get in touch with Angelique. Um, so thank you, everyone, for your time and enjoy. Thank your you.